Hello, this is Salamander Anagram with ADSRCourses.com and welcome to part 5 of our tutorial series on the new blocks framework in Reactor 6. In this video I'll be designing a new oscillator module from scratch. For more Reactor content, please check out our website at ADSRCourses.com. We have tons of free Reactor content and much, much more. To begin designing our oscillator, I'm going to hop into the structure view and copy and paste one of our existing template files. And let's begin by getting rid of all the inputs and outputs that we don't need. So I'm just going to use the reset and the pitch inputs um, for this module. And I'm going to get rid of all the outputs besides one. We can do the same thing in our process core cell just to clean things up a bit. The blocks framework provides a few different macros to help us process the pitch input and the reset input as well. So once we have things sorted here, we're going to go to the process macros core cell provided in our template ensemble and grab one of those macros. So I want to use the OSC tuning macro here, which is very useful. So I'll copy it and we'll go back to our process macro and paste it in. All right, so we'll connect the pitch to the tuning macro, but we don't have anything else to supply the other three inputs quite yet. But we can grab those from our template. I'll go to the dark on light instrument and there's another macro named OSC tuning that's the panel counterpart of the core macro. So we'll copy that and paste it in our panel macro. And of course the AB buttons input will be supplied by the macro of the same name. And um, if you look inside this macro, you'll see we have one button and two knobs. However, the knobs of the knobs, only one of them can be modulated. So the um, fine tuning knob is not modulatable for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure why. I think you could probably replace it with a modulation knob and not have any problems, but we're just going to keep things simple and leave it as it is. So the one modulation return that we need for this macro can be supplied by the C0 input. And we'll send our two knob outputs to the default outputs in our template. Then I want to add another output port for the keyboard tracking button. And we'll name that uh, P0. So I'm just keeping with the port naming conventions of the blocks framework where we name all of our knobs C0, C1, C2, etc. and all of our buttons P0, P1, P2, etc. So we have the coarse tuning knob flowing into the C0 input and we want to send that value to our OSC tuning macro. So I'll create a quick bus and name it coarse and we can connect that quick bus to our tuning macro. Now I'd like to just do the same thing for the fine tuning knob, but if we look closely, you'll notice that the smooth macro here has built in modulation as well. And as I mentioned a minute ago, um, the fine tuning knob is not modulatable. So we're gonna need another smoothing macro for this instance, one that doesn't um, have modulation built in, and we can find that inside the process macros core cell. So let's copy that, and we can paste it inside our own processing macro, replacing the modulation smoother. And coming out our smoother here, we can create another quick bus, name it fine, and connect it to our OSC tuning macro. 
And next up, let's create our modulation returns. We don't need that for the fine-tune knob, since there's no modulation with that knob. And for the coarse tuning knob, we can just connect to the coarse quick bus that we created already. We also want to make sure that our key tracking button is coming into our processing macro. So let's create an input for that. And we can create a quick bus called K track. And the K track quick bus, of course, will feed the K track input to our OSC tuning macro. So we didn't use a smoother with the key tracking button, and that's just because we don't need one there. A lot of the time you don't need a smoother with parameters controlled by buttons. Um, occasionally you do, but a lot of the time you don't. So let's connect the output from our panel view to the new input in our processing macro, and we're all set there. Next, let's add the oscillator that we'll be using in the audio folder of our library. Under oscillators, I'm just going to find the sawtooth and use that for now. So I'll provide the frequency of our sawtooth using the frequency output from the OSC tuning macro. And next, let's find a way to deal with the reset input. If we go to our process macros core cell, there's a reset input by default and it provides a handy macro for using reset signals and so basically what this macro will do is output an event every time the incoming signal rises above zero and so a really standard way to connect the reset input would be to a MIDI gate value and every time we receive a new MIDI gate um, we'll restart the oscillator from scratch. The bottom input of the sawtooth macro SR can be left unconnected and if it is then reactor will simply give it a default value so I'll generally leave anything with an SR input disconnected unless I need to change something so at this point in time, we can connect our sawtooth to the output of our core cell here, and we'd have a really boring sawtooth oscillator module. So to make things a bit more exciting, I'll duplicate our existing tuning and oscillator macros and provide a slightly different fine tuning value to our lower oscillator here. So I'm going to take our fine-tune value and subtract it from 1. And this means that when we turn the fine-tuning knob up, that our bottom oscillator here will actually have its tuning turned down. And so these, are going to, these two oscillators will tune in different directions from each other when you turn the knob. And this is just a very common basic synthesis technique to create a little bit of extra width in a oscillator signal. So in order to mix together our two oscillators, we can simply add them together and then I'll multiply the output by 0 0.5. So this is a little more exciting than just a normal sawtooth oscillator and one thing I'd like to add is the ability to spread the oscillators apart by phase as well, which can also be a pretty neat effect. So in order to do this, I'll need a new knob, and I'll grab one from one of our panel templates here. And I'm not going to use a modulation knob for this, because the phase of an oscillator of the sawtooth macro that we're using can only be set uh, when we're getting a reset event. So it's not really very exciting to modulate a knob that's not really doing anything most of the time. So I'll paste our knob into our panel macro, add a new output for it named C2, and I'll change the port position to be right after C1. 
I'm going to hop inside the knob macro and change the label to read phase. Once we're done here, we want to create an input in our processing macro so that we can receive a value from our newly created knob. So let's hop in there. I'm going to duplicate our inputs for C1 here and simply change the name of our inputs and our quick bus. So this can be rewritten. Let's call it spread. And just make sure that you connect your panel view macro to the processing macro for all of your controls. In order to control the phase of one of our oscillators using the spread input, all we need to do is create a latch, hit enter and type in latch, and we'll have the spread go into the upper input, which is the value to be written to the reset value. And we'll use the reset event to trigger that value. So if we look at the info for the sawtooth oscillator, you'll see that the reset um, input receives a value from 0 to 1, which is also the default value of all of the knobs in the blocks framework. So that works out for us nicely. So I'll take a moment to rearrange things off camera, and then we can make sure that everything's working. If we leave the fine tune and phase knobs to their default positions, we get a basic sawtooth wave. Spreading out the phase adds in some and spreading out the fine tuning will give you a more chorusy type of effect. All right, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. Uh, for more of my work, please check out our website. We've got a ton of text tutorials as well as a lot of free videos. Thanks for watching.